Hey, what's going on YouTube? Kenny here. So today we get to do the favoritest thing for me. That is uh, shill our beloved AMD. So if you're new to this channel, there's only one stock that we shill on this channel and that's AMD. Well, maybe a little bit of Jamia sometimes too, but mostly AMD. Uh, super bullish on it. That's because me and Dr. Sue go way back. Uh, Lisa, as I like to call her, uh, that's 100% lie, 100% uh, fib. Not true. Uh, we don't even know each other, but I do stock. Just kidding. Please relax. Uh, okay. No, seriously though, um, when it comes to like price targets and kind of the quant side of stuff, yes, we are very, very unbiased. But when it comes to just talking and shilling it and having fun and joking around, we do like to shill AMD here because, again, Lisa. Uh, okay, so today we're going to get into two things. One, we're going to talk about how you could probably get uh, AMD a lot cheaper. Uh, and no, it's not an options play. We'll talk about it really soon here. Uh, and the second piece is uh, new analyst guidance, uh, new uh reiterations of the price targets and then also Redcliffe Research price targets were updated for AMD and that's because Lisa said that uh, it's going to be 60% year over year growth now coming up from 37% so massive growth here uh, and in fact if you look at the analysts they're treating this thing like a value stock boys and girls what value stock do you know that goes up 60% year over year incredible idiots uh okay anyway let's go ahead and get on with it uh let's talk about everything we're going to talk about so this is angel from the innovation lab uh he's a resident expert when it comes to all things semiconductors it's definitely taken me to homeschool a couple times uh so anyways here here goes the highlights of the earnings i'm not going to belabor the point because in the live video yesterday you can go back and look at it we talked about much of this stuff but essentially uh the embedded and semi-custom segment revenue was uh up uh 1.6 billion not up 1.6 billion up 183 percent year over year <laughs> and 19 percent quarter over quarter this increases uh these increases the increases were driven by higher epic processor revenue and semi-custom product sales the operating income was 398 million compared to just 333 million a year ago that's 33 million so 33 million to 398 million that's more than 10x boys and girls ridiculous does that look like a value stock to you come on analysts relax give us some credit anyways uh 277 million from the prior quarter so quarter growth even very extreme but uh come on year over year get out of here uh okay so we did have a bad year last year, though. It was like a 4% growth year or something like that. Uh, anyways, whatever. Uh, the increases were primarily, primarily driven by higher revenue. The numbers are very good, and AMD keeps getting market share uh, of the server market, which is really important to us. As previous, uh, previously, we talked about this is a very early ramp cycle for them, where it is incredibly difficult to make enterprise customers switch. And this is a big point here. Uh, processors after having validated current solutions. You don't need a better processor you need an order of magnitude better processor. Uh, that being said, it bothers me that they did not separate the enterprise servers from the semi-custom. Is your money coming from Epic processors or PS5 processors? I'm not too worried about that because I do realize that you have to black box some of the things that you can black box, uh, and that's just for competition's sake. Uh, obviously, competitors are always looking how to see how you will align your resources. I get it. Uh, it could be a signal, uh, but, I mean, based on the numbers and based on the non-GAAP uh, uh, numbers that they presented to us yesterday, uh, I'm not too worried about it. Um, here's something diff uh, interesting that uh, Angel brings up. Uh, although it's not an apples to apples comparison because AMD includes its server business under Custom Semi, but it went up 19% over the previous quarter while uh, Intel's went down 9%. So it depends on how they translate this. And again, um, the SEC filings actually audited uh, gap findings uh, might be a little bit different. So we'll wait on that and we'll see what that looks like. But honestly, again, not really too worried about it. Uh, okay, what's next? Okay, so this is what we were talking about. Uh, okay, so if you didn't know Xilinx, <laughs> if you didn't know you lived on a rock, Xilinx is going to be merging with, uh, excuse me, sorry, <clears throat> with AMD. Uh, and uh, AMD is going to acquire Xilinx. The, the idea here is that... Um, if you look at this chart, so the share deal, right, is 1.7234 to 1. So essentially, if you own $1 of uh, Xilinx, that equals 1.7234 dollars. 
Uh, okay, but here's here's another crazy thing. Okay, so if that that's that's your one to one. So if you merge and it looks like that, it's one to one, right? Um, I mean, bonus bonus points for anybody holding Xilinx pre pre announcement and all that stuff. Price should have pretty much baked most of that in, but in fact, it hasn't. It's there's some sil silly divergence going on here, silly games here. Uh, so as you can see, the ratio has kind of uh, <laughs> increased <laughs> and so like here's 100 percent, right so if 100 percent means that is 1.723 to 1 right so you can see it has dropped down to the about uh, and this is july 25th so i mean it's not perfectly updated but here uh at about uh 85 uh 83 83 right so it's about 16 and a half percent uh 16 and a half percent uh, it looks like, yeah, about 83.5. I can't really see the chart, but like, let's just call it 16%. So, I mean, honestly, it's free money on the table if they go through with the merger. So what is the risk? The risk is obviously no merger. If they don't merge, then yeah, you're stuck with Xilinx shares and then you're kind of screwed, whatever. Uh, one second while I take a drink here. So what you see here is the... Uh, Gordon Growth Exit, uh, looking at uh, trying to, you know, figure out this discounted cash flow. I pulled this for straight from Finbox, um, but here, take a look. Take a look at this. Uh, I didn't mess with the the discount rate or the tax rate at all. Uh, but look at this. Okay, so they put fifty nine point nine because they still didn't give Lisa credit for sixty percent. Whatever. Uh, I really don't know why they do that. I don't know if that's like a typical thing, if there's a rounding issue or something like that. Anyways, uh, they have a preloaded 59.9, so it has been updated. And the fair market value is $114.49 with a 16.8% upside. Uh, typically, this is pretty bearish, but this is looking like, obviously, uh, based on the stock price, even uh, straight up <laughs> as a value stock. And I know this is Gordon Growth Exit, but uh, discounted models usually don't, don't capture... Uh, good companies really well because good companies usually outshine this kind of model anyways but anyways the problem i have with this is look at 11.6 percent 10.9 percent 3.8 and then 5.2 and i don't know uh you know if you're going to put stuff in in perpetuity these are not the numbers i would use but then what doesn't make sense to me is why where's this 3.8 percent forecast for the for uh december 24 and then 2025, 5.2. Makes no sense to me. Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Like, you can depreciate it over time or whatever like that. Somebody can explain this to me if you want to explain it to me. But it doesn't make sense to me. So what I did <laughs> is I uh, – well, I didn't do this. But anyways, let's look at the uh, – before I go into what I did to, to fix that or to, to, to model that my way um, is just take a look at this. So the highest price target is 150. The average price target is 111. The lowest is 80. Uh, and so, you know – I did um, I did a uh, sort for recency, so all these folks have reiterated. Or there's a new assignment right here. There's new assignment for 110. So Mark is getting on the gain train here and saying uh, AMD is worth 110, and obviously it's trading at about 97 dollars right now. I think post 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 market. Uh, anyways, as you can see, we got Hans over here. Hans Morsman, uh, he's a hitter. He's a winner, saying 150. Uh, he's always coming in right. Five star rating. Oh, all these guys got five star rating, but as you can tell, uh, most everybody's way way up there. Just uh, Robert here with the ninety dollar price target. He needs to go ahead and figure out what's going on with his life. Uh, make better decisions. Uh, anyways, sorry Tristan if uh, if you are making good decisions, but uh, this is not one of them. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> anyways, uh, the idea here is there's three kind of growth stages when you're doing this type of modeling discounted cash flows which i don't think is the best for stocks like this but i think it's good to get a baseline and, and at least think about how others are thinking about it so if you can beat them at your own get their own game and you can kind of figure out the nuance then it's always always important to take a look at it but essentially expansion uh and then decelerated growth expansion which is which uh you know usually over 10 percent uh and again you saw up here <laughs> Over 10%, over 10%, here is where they start to getting to that, uh, what they call decelerated growth stage. That's about 5 to 8%, what you're saying. So they're assuming that in two years, uh, they get to decelerated growth. But I'm saying that these numbers are bullshit, <laughs> and I'm going to show you. Uh, anyways, mature 
stage growth. And that's where I think this is where if you want to do a discounted cash flow, it makes more sense. Uh, for BABA, companies like that, uh, easier to kind of uh, figure out how fast they're going to grow. Uh, it's a lot more steady. Okay. Um, here is their uh, CAGR over time. So 2006, 8.2%. So yes. Okay. If you were in 2016 and you're thinking about AMD, then maybe you would have said, okay, maybe they've hit uh, what they call the decelerated growth stage and maybe they're starting to hit maturation. But uh, wake up and pay attention, right? So 21%, 23%. Okay, you had a bad year, but so uh, that happens. But here's the crazy thing. 45%, man. <laughs> and you're talking about 60% next year? How is this not a growth company? Show some fucking respect, people. All right, so if we show some respect, which I did, uh, and I know this is not traditionally the way that you do it, but it works for me. So we're going to go with it. And I think this is actually um, modest, to be honest with you, because the average price here is $20.42, not $20, but 20.42%. Uh, so if you average all these out. Uh, and so I say, okay, let's start with 20. Let's work our way down 19, 18, 17. Uh, and I think, honestly, I would not be surprised, and we're sitting at 59% here, if we go down to like, I don't know, next year go down to 50 and then 40 or something like that. But this is being very, very conservative. Uh, and with those conservative numbers, we still get a fair value of $152.10 with a 55% upside. And you're like, Kenny, is that uh, your Red Cliff price target? Absolutely not, because um, this is not where we play. This is not where we live. In terms of how we do it, this is how others play it, but it's always nice to know how others are playing the game so you can make your own decisions. And the way we make our decisions is based on a lot of things. One, quant, sentiment analysis, uh, traditional models is one. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and get into our score. So our bear case is 75 $75. So if everything completely goes wrong, more bottlenecks happen. Uh, we've seen a nice, very solid floor at 75. It's been scooped up time over time, year over year. Uh, even if it did get catastrophic, there's no way it's dropping below 75. Uh, not in our mind. I'd seen it before, but yeah, even in a kind of catastrophe situation, uh, maybe we get back to 75 in another kind of weird pandemic where people just go nuts again. But uh, there's so many lessons learned right now that I don't see that even happening. I think the uh, chip shortage won't happen again. Uh, I don't think people will uh, deliver lower guidance when it comes to manufacturing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so based on that, the bear case is only $75, not bankruptcy. I know some of you all want me to put zero there. I'm not going to have it, boys and girls. Somebody will buy it. Uh, base case, 157.88. That's based on a bunch of things. Uh, but essentially, yeah, some of the some of the modeling that we're doing and uh, just kind of some of the price action uh, in aggregate. Uh, in the bull case, 165.44, and that's forecasting off of a lot of different uh, kind of regression analysis and, and uh, taking in consideration, obviously, a lot of uh, the consensus scores and stuff like that. So uh, what you get is the base score of 151.91, uh, and then we assign a probability of risk, which we black boxed. <laughs> Again, everybody needs a black box up there, right? Uh, so yeah, no, you can't audit this, but I can tell you what my base case, my bull case, and my bear case are. But in terms of probability and the percentage of that happening, uh, that's assigned uh, to the, the, the risk people uh, at Redcliffe Research. And so we assign a risk, uh, we assign the percentage of that happening. And so we uh, go ahead and get the expected value of 162. We add our consensus smoothing score, which is essentially saying that, hey, we're going to give um, the analyst uh, and the professionals some credit uh, and we uh, give it a weight. And then obviously our base case for Redcliffe Research, 151. But our price target based on the probability and the risk assigned is $140.47, which equals a 44% upside from here. So what does that mean for you? Uh, that means we're very bullish. Uh, and so just realize that when we gave our first price target of 118 ish uh, that has to hit before year's end, so January. So right now we're, we're saying 140, but we're not saying that that's going to happen by January. What we're saying is uh, eight, 12 to 18 months from now, from today, 12 to 18 months from today, it could hit 140. And that's what we indeed think it's worth. Uh, and if it hits it tomorrow, that's fine too. And we'll probably keep it at 140 for a while uh, just because we need to see the next earnings cycle, et cetera, et cetera. But anyways, super pumped always to talk about AMD. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, 
macro news collider coming out in two days so if you're not signed up for that it's free you can go to our website and check it out snoop around or you can get it i think link is in the description as well um yeah anyways if you uh are new here and you got to the end let me know It'd be interesting uh thanks for watching and we will see you tomorrow bye